Thank you, Mr. Chairman, very much, and thank you, gentlemen, for appearing before the committee. They, uh, reliability and affordability uh, in how we power our lives is very important to my constituents back home in Florida. And we were reminded recently with uh, a powerful Category 3 hurricane. We In Florida, we lost uh, about 250,000 Floridians lost power, and I want to thank all the line workers <laughs> and everyone who, who worked to, to get the power back on as quickly as possible. But, you know, I, I do not believe that uh, reliability is incompatible with moving to cleaner, cheaper energy. Uh, it's, it's not like we can, we're going to do it like this. This is, uh, it's going to take all of us working together to get there, but I, I, I've just seen too much evidence that heavily polluting fossil fuel plants and outdated, dirty appliances uh, are, they really are a, a, a lag, they're really uh, complicating our ability to move forward with cleaner, cheaper energy and to get more innovative technologies and lower cost uh, clean energy onto the grid. I, I think hearing it over and over again really ignores the, the reality of what's happening because natural gas power plants, uh, for example, have proven to be particularly vulnerable during extreme weather events, whether we're talking about hurricanes or, or winter storms. And moreover, the high cost of gas is really wearing on my neighbors back home. It is very apparent in Florida because we're, we're touted as the sunshine state, yet the utilities uh, have kept us really uh, hooked on gas. 75% of our electricity generation in the sunshine state is gas. And what has that meant? Massive electric bill increases over the past year, especially since uh, Putin invaded Ukraine. So we, we're looking for these innovative and uh, techniques and, and expansion of transmission to get cleaner resources onto the grid. Uh, just two weeks ago, DOE rolled out its first, first tranche of funding for the Transmission Siting and Economic Development Grant Initiative. It's about $760 million uh, through the Inflation Reduction Act designed to help overcome the permitting challenges that slow the deployment of uh, transmission infrastructure. I'm, I'm really proud that the Select Committee on the Climate Crisis helped put this initiative together that was included in the Inflation Reduction Act. Assistant Secretary Rodriguez, can you discuss why the, the rapid build out of new transmission lines is essential for grid reliability and, and how is that pre-planning initiative, this this new transmission siting and, and economic development grant initiative. How is that going and what what do you need from uh, stakeholders moving forward to make it work? Th thank you very much. And I want to jump on uh, the one word you used in there that is the most essential thing that I want every member to think about, pre-planning. The idea here that we're trying to do from the Department of Energy is to help to modernize Americans' grid by working with industry, by working with folks like yourself, so that we can take the steps today that will ensure that as we move into the future where there is going to be more demand and more innovation, that the grid remains as reliable, as resilient, as secure and affordable as it is today. Two things around transmission, if I may. Number one, yes, it is absolutely necessary that we start working on and thinking about today everything from the permitting process, et cetera, for new transmission, for more interconnectivity. America needs a grid where we all can share in the work of reliability. But may I add one thing that I hope, as you all work together on reliability, that you consider as well. There are advanced grid technologies available today, available today, that can and should be used to enhance the throughput and the reliability and the safety of existing transmission corridors. We're working on both of those in the Department of Energy. We're working with industry to help prove those out. And quite frankly, we're working with utilities and grid planners to help them get the confidence they need to make these investments today. I hope that you all look at that as well. So how is the pre-planning effort going, this, the new transmission siting and economic development initiative? And then I hear you on the grid enhancing technologies. Is, 
are you able to, to work with stakeholders to bring in the, the GETs, the grid enhancing technologies, as part of this uh, pre-planning initiative? Yes, we're working on it as a roll up your sleeves initiative. Every person in my office knows that I only talk about reliability and resilience with the word affordability, and that's part of the answer. So, so far, it is going uh, pretty darn well. I am so proud of the sister agency, not agency, sister office and the grid deployment office and the work that they're doing. They are rolling out uh, solutions as we speak, but probably more importantly, helping, uh, that, uh, helping industry to make the investments needed through that. Also, my, my friends in MESC are helping on that as well. This is a whole uh, Department of Energy approach. We're trying Can you to give us an example, one part of the, the country or a certain state where, where you think there's, there's great promise or you've seen, po oh, I'm sorry, am I over? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll yield back, thank you. Thank you. I generally have time to explain.